What would you like to tell your mother? Oh, that's a microphone. You got this. You got the microphone. For I can do it if you'd like. You can throw it right in there. Okay, no, there's a lot of people. <laughs> there is a lot of people. Did you not know? <laughs> Don't come Did you think this is true? Okay, do you want to tell her or should I tell her? Um, can you tell her? I can tell her, yeah. Okay, are you ready? Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Hi, God, I can't stop smiling. Okay, let's hear it. Lisa! 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 I don't want to ruin a moment. Wouldn't it be nice if you were a little bit closer together? Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos. All right, so the world saw McKinley McConnell come out to her mom, thanks to Harry Styles last week at his concert in Wisconsin. The moment went viral on TikTok and beyond. We saw it and we knew we had to know the full story and talk and I'm so excited to be chatting with McKinley and her mother, Lisa, right now. How are you both? Fine, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> well, I mean, how does it feel, McKinley? I mean, you're out. I mean, Harry Styles helped you. Your mom had a great reaction. How are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, everything went as well as it could in the situation, um, but I'm feeling very, feeling very grateful, feeling very like no weight on my shoulders, feeling like myself. I'm feeling really good. Lisa, you were, we saw you in section 201, right? Section 201. Famous you were up human. there. Tell me about the moment when Harry Styles said, Lisa, she's gay. What was that like for you? Um, it was a rush of emotions. McKinley has admired this artist for a very long time. So in my head, I was just like, he's talking to her. She, her life is made. That's it. That's, <laughs> and so I was coming from that perspective that he was actually making eye contact with my daughter. And then, oh, look, he's mentioned my name. That, that's about as far as I was going. But then when the moment actually happened, I, I was like, what is, and it just rushed. I was like, there's the whole backstory with the, the poster. So connecting all the dots instantly just was a, a rush of emotions. So you did not know that, you did not see that poster but you didn't know what was happening down there. Well, she asked to make a poster at my house and she did not want me to see it. Got it. I did know that it had the gold uh, trim and I did see her start to write the first two words, my mom, and then I just let it go. I figured, I don't know what she's going to do. I figured she's in the pit. I'm in the section. Maybe it's something cute, like help get my mom down to pit or something like that. I just completely forgot about it. But, you know, that day I took her out to the Deer District and we had dinner and we were walking around and she was clutching this poster the entire time. And then when the moment he said that, then it dawned on me, she was carrying this the whole time. And the what was going through her head the, the courage that she was trying to get and, and just holding on to it, that's what started making me cry because I realized that that poster was so valuable at that point. And for her to do what she just did in the arena, in the venue, in the artist that she has grown up with, that's where the flood of emotions came from. 
I love that. So McKinley, take me back because you were with a friend or, or at least one friend because we can hear them in the video. Where did the idea, you know, come to do this? Because like Harry said, you know, did you think this through? There's a lot of people. How did you, you know, come up with this idea? And then were you like, uh oh, what have I done? Or were you, you know, in? Like exactly. Um, well, I had gotten my mom a ticket to the concert two days before. So it was a super last minute thing. And I took that as like a sign from the universe that, okay, maybe this would be an opportune moment. He's, I mean, obviously this doesn't happen every concert. He's known to interact and read signs. My friend Grace, uh, the 2018 tour, um, he read her sign and helped her come out. Previously oh. at the Connecticut show, he helped another girl come out. So I was like, okay, maybe, I was like, maybe it'll happen. I never posted it, but I had a backup on the other side of the poster. Cause I, I didn't know if I would like have the guts to go through with it. And yeah, I asked my mom and I said, okay, if you can just stay in that room, I'll stay in this room. And then, yeah, when I eventually got there, the, the girls around me were like, we were showing everybody like what our posters were. And they were just so encouraging. They're like, no, you have, cause I told them like, oh no, I'll probably hold the other side. And they were like, no, like you have to hold up the, the one with the gold trim. Like we're going to get it done. And it was just like an amazing sense of like support and comfort around me the entire interaction. And yeah, I had like, I didn't even anticipate he'd actually pick that sign and read it. Well, but when he did, when he came to the stage and you're, you know, so close to him and he's reading it and interacting with you, you can hear the excitement, but also like, oh no, like, you know, like, I mean, when your favorite celebrity is right in front of you, what was it like to, when you realized, oh my gosh, this is actually going to happen? I literally feel like all the gears in my brain stopped working. Like genuinely everything just went to like a full blown stop because it is so overwhelming. He does so well to make things so personable for every fan at every stop that he talks with. So you do feel like it's a one-on-one -on -one interaction. However, this tour is different. It's like a 360 stage, right? So normally if you're barricade, you just see the stage, you don't see anything else. But while I was like staring at him, I'm just like looking around and I was like, oh my God. And I was just becoming so aware of the amount of people. It's like an actual surreal once in a lifetime thing to have him talk to you and like mention you. Like I just freaked out that he said my name and I was like, oh, I'm done. Like I, I could be done with that and have like the best time of my life. So it's just a like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Lisa, you're obviously here today and you know, getting the courage to come out to family can be very stressful and can be, you know, so difficult for us. Um, you know, you're obviously here supporting uh, your daughter. How, you know, have you been able to have more obviously in-depth conversations and kind of learn more about uh, your daughter, you know, now that Harry Styles is out of the picture and you two can just kind of chat it out and be a little more intimate together? Uh, no, I, she has a very full calendar. So I'm hoping in January, we're going to be able to sit down and have more conversations. I talk to her and I keep checking in on her, but the actual uh, details, knit and gritty of the entire conversation, I probably will wait until after the holidays and get a hold of her in January and talk to her. Got it. And, and McKinley, do you feel that, you know, you've got your mom's support at least until you have that, that, you know, more official conversation, I guess we can call it. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, like my poor mom, like I did this huge thing and then got on a, a, on a flight the next morning at 7 a.m. and was like, okay, hey, gotta go to work. Right. And then I'm going to more of his shows. So I'm literally like traveling and doing school all the time. So my poor mom is just like trying to call and talk, but I mean, each and every member of like my family has reached out and like, especially my siblings the most, cause they like, my siblings, I think our generation is more used to having like in-depth heart to heart talks through text. So like they're checking in and like talking, but I know both my parents, like my mom and my dad, like they keep going, okay, well, you're going to like sit down and we're going to like discuss, like, I want to check in on you. But even though we haven't had that, like heart to heart, like check in, I still felt like nothing but love and support from like both my mom and dad. Oh, that's that's so great. I mean, yeah, Lisa, you I would love for you to talk about that because I we know for, you know, 
kids and people that come out, you know, that are as part of the LGBT community, it's so important to have family support, especially from mom and dad. So, you know, how, you know, important is it for you to, you know, support McKinley now that she's, you know, come out and is living her most authentic truth, you know, at least with publicly with the family. I try to raise the children that in our house, in our car, it's a bubble. You can say whatever you want. We can discuss whatever you want, a non-judgment zone. I want it to be very approachable with my children. And we did. There was always very interesting conversations. There was um, a safe place. And these are our children. These are our little babies. I want her to be happy. I want her to be loved. I want her to love someone. I, I will love my, all my children for, for anything that they do, any of their accomplishments. I will always be very proud of them. And I think from the very beginning, we established as parents a very safe place for them to come and talk to us. It, oh, there, are, there are babies, you know, there are children. That's really beautiful. Yes, we need more parents out there like you. Um, McKinley, you know, I, I, you know, obviously you've been out, I think, in, with friends and stuff, but how does it feel for you now to, because we know that there's no rules for coming out, there's no timeline, but it can be very difficult to say those words to your parents. Harry Styles said it for you, but how do you feel now to kind of have you know, for lack of a better term, that weight lifted off of your shoulders. I think now, especially more recently, like right after it happened and in the beginnings of it going viral, I had like zero time to process it. And I think especially because literally yesterday I was like back with my group of friends that like knows me the most, that like knows my authentic self. So I think it was when I was with them yesterday, like it kind of really started to hit me and the weight of it all, it, like not in a bad way, like just started to make me feel so grateful for the situation. And then I like purposely sat down and actually started going through like millions of DMs and messages. And I think the craziest thing is hearing other people's stories. Like I had a girl message me on TikTok and she said her mom's name is Lisa. Her mom passed away a couple of years ago and like she never got to say those words. And so she was like, literally just like, pouring her heart out to me and telling me like hearing that just means so much. I have like little 15, 16 year olds telling me like their parents aren't as accepting as like my mom who's sobbing on a jumbotron. So I'm trying to like take it all in and be so incredibly grateful. But literally my friend mentioned last night when I was at his concert, she was like, you just seem more, more relaxed. You seem more carefree. You don't kind of seem as like, like as nervous as anxious. You just seem like very calm. So I, I guess I'm taking it well. <laughs> I, that's so great to hear. You know, you said you're going to be uh, on many tour stops seeing Harry. You know, what would you say to him now, having him helped you in this big moment in your life to come out to your mom? I think just like, thank you. I was at his um, Tacoma, Washington show last night. We actually had just like a really like sweet interaction. And it was like, I went into that show like with no plans. I was in the back with, my friend and we like put our phones down and we were just sitting and like dancing. And it was just like a moment of like contact. And he was like, I know you, like, I remember you. And like, all I did is I just pulled my mask down. I was like, thank you. And like, I think that's it. Cause I'm sure like a lot of celebrities are aware of the impact they have on their fans. Like they're a hundred percent in the known. And I think something just as simple as like thanking them for being such an inspiration to like my generation to his fans is something that can go such a long way. I love that. Well, Lisa, you said you haven't really had a, you know, before we wrap up, you haven't had too much time to say anything, you know, in depth to McKinley. Is there anything you would like to say here before, you know, we wrap up, um, you know, we're over Zoom, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy looking forward to your meet in January, but in case there's anything you want to say now, you have a, an opportunity. Oh, to McKinley? Yeah. <laughs> that I love her. I love her. I, I I said this to her before, and I've said this, I'm very honored and humble as a parent to see the strength and the courage 
that she displayed, it's very few points in your life that as a parent, I can sit back and go, yeah, I think I did a good job, you know? And she definitely gave me that gift that you always question, woulda, shoulda, coulda, I, I should have done this. But when she did that and I'm sitting back, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I have good kids and I did a good job. And it was nice. And I think that was a special gift that she gave me. So thank you, McKinley. I love that. And McKinley, you gave a gift to, to all of us. We get to see that video over and over again. Um, but anyway, thank you both so much. McKinley, congratulations. Say hi to Harry for me. Good luck <laughs> wherever you're going next. I love that you're you know, going all over. And Lisa, thank you yes. so much for being so honest. And, and it's so wonderful to hear um, you know, your unwavering support for your daughter. I know it's going to yes. be very inspiring and impactful for a lot of families out there. But um, yes. take care, both of you. And uh, I'll talk to you hopefully soon. Maybe I'll see you at the Harry Styles show. <laughs> Maybe I will. I'll see you there.